Rick and Scott have been on News Radio Wood 1300 for five years. It just amazes me that anyone would do this. The Rick and Scott Show. The Rick and Scott Show. On News Radio 1300 WOOD. Okay, when you first got Rick and Scott together to do um, the show together, how long did it take for them to say yes to it? Quite honestly, I think Rick had to be talked into it more than Scott, uh, because of you know the fact it was a, it was something they'd never done before. It was a huge leap, and uh, really, I, I I had no doubt from the beginning that when they got in the studio and they were free of the encumberment of music and the. Uh, what was the bit you used to do, Super Hooters Wednesday? Yeah. Tuesday. 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 Yeah, right. And those kinds of bits, which we told him several times would not fly on Wood Radio. Uh, it, 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 it was, uh, you know, I, I don't think it was as hard for Scott as it was for Rick, but once I got him on board and we showed him what we were willing to pay him and Scott, uh, <laughs> it was a done deal. I'd like to ask the next question. <laughs> if you have questions for someone other than uh, Rick or I, we've got uh, Angie Bice, program director down at the end. Uh, Mary, producer of the morning show, she's down there taking some video. Of course, Steve Kelly, Gary Allen, from West Michigan Morning News. Bill Steffen, we'll let him entertain questions for him. we got Kurt Benson, uh, Greg, who's a friend of the station, Greg Mosheri, and then of course, Bill Tower. So questions for any of those people, we'll entertain them. Anyone else got more questions? Go ahead, sir. Okay, I was wondering, uh, do you have any plans at all to syndicate at all? Uh, at this point, no, and we were in Muskegon for a while. One of the, the strengths of our show is we can be local and live, and we can talk about issues here in Grand Rapids. We're, you know, we were talking yesterday about the, uh, the, the uh, lady that was on the lamp for 32 years from Michigan, uh, and we do a lot of Grand Rapids issues. Well, if we're syndicated, we have to make our show very generic. You know, people don't want to talk about the, the issues we have with parking in Grand Rapids and stuff. So that's the only problem with possibly syndicating the show is then it loses some of its local flavor. We really don't want to do that because that really has been one of the strengths of the show uh, and, and the success of the show is we can talk about local issues. When it comes to politics, you know, Rush and Sean are going to, and even Michael Savage are going to talk for, you know, hours on end about it. So we really, and we, every morning we come in with five, six, seven different topics we're going to talk about. We will typically be swayed more towards the local issues, just because that really is what our show's all about. Hi, just a uh, long time listener. I was curious, when listeners phone in, how is it determined what call gets through? Because lately, <clears throat> it seems like there's a lot more men that get through than women. <laughs> Times we'll determine. First off, uh, especially the last couple of uh, months when Rick's been gone, I've been taking them pretty much in the order they come in. And, and if someone calls in on a cell phone, obviously we don't want you to eat your cell phone minutes up. Uh, but uh, typically, when you talk to Benny, is Benny still? Yeah, Benny's down here. In case you haven't met Benny, uh, Benny will put comments up on the screen as to what you want to talk about. That's why he goes through that screening process with you. And we try to find people that. We don't want to have five or six people in a row that all agree or disagree. So we try to mix it up. And so we look at those comments that you give Benny, and that pretty much determines what call we take and what order. And also, we look up on that same screen, and we'll see something like uh, line two sounds like they've been drinking. <laughs> so we, yeah, and they're the ones that get on the air. So drink up, folks, and call us. <laughs> yes. You're older like me. I, I wonder if sometimes I, I've sensed a temper down underneath there. Have you ever lost your temper on the radio? No. First of all, kiss my ass. <laughs> Take that white boy from that guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did not mean that. I'm terribly sorry. My temper got the best of me. I'm sorry, sir. What was the question again? I don't remember the question. Oh, Gary, uh, please, please, this walking, dirty joke, this guy, you should hear this guy off the air, he's just, he's just filthy, I mean, triple X rated, what's up with this guy, would I buy an appliance from you, oh no, I don't think so, you guys do a terrific job, you know, Gary thinks he's getting ready to retire, this guy won't retire, seriously, I'll bet he'll hit 70 by the time he leaves with radio. What do you think, Scott? So next year. Huh? So next year? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Matt Howard, a year away from that. Ooh, man, Bill. I want the mic. <laughs> what do you say that for? <laughs> That's wow. Start the process. <laughs> I, tell you, I, I tell you what, folks, I won't say Gary Allen's old, but he didn't come to Grand Rapids until after he planted the redwood trees out in California. <laughs> Ouch. Good thing we got a few bodies between you two. I won't tell you that he's old, but he used to babysit for a little John Ball. <laughs> 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 gotta have a third one in there somewhere.